All right, we're back now with breaking news. The new inflation report for August was just released, and it says the consumer price index rose 0.1% in August. And for more on this, we're joined by editor-in-chief of Investopedia, Caleb Silver, and CNET editor-at-large, Farnoosh Taravi. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Farnoosh, we'll start with you. Uh, I'm curious, uh, we know what this report says, so what does it mean for the average American's wallet? Well, thanks for having me. I mean, rising 0.1%, that's not what we were expecting. We thought that uh, CPI would be cooling a little bit um, as we saw gas prices fall this summer. Uh, so what this means for the average consumer is you got to really hold on to your cash uh, because what this will indicate to the Federal Reserve is that they have runway now to continue raising interest rates to really clamp down on inflation, which has been their goal all year. Um, that's going to mean rising interest rates, of course, and that may mean more pressure on companies to manage their budget. They may have to lay off more people. So really, I think the big message I'm giving consumers right now is don't spend if you don't have to and keep your cash. All right, Caleb, let's bring you in here. I know you've got your eye on a few things here, rent and electricity specifically. What can you tell us about those? Yeah, rent, electricity, food prices, too, all rising again. We're looking at food prices up 11.4% uh, year over year. Those prices continue to remain really high. We see uh, energy prices, electricity prices up again, another 11%. Fuel oil up 68.8%. That's a lot. And that's a lot of people using fuel or natural gas to cool their homes, especially out west. It's, very bit, it's been very hot out here. So these prices continue to rise while we're seeing some decreasing pressure on gasoline. Obviously, that's fallen for more than 80 days in a row. But still, as Farnoosh points out, this we were expecting a, more of a decrease here. Instead, we have a slight increase for the month of August. Overall, 8.3 percent. We're still at that 40-year high. And as Farnoosh points out, that's just going to put more pressure on the Fed to raise rates aggressively. Their next meeting is September 20th and 21st. We can probably expect three-quarters of a percent at least, and maybe another one of those three-quarters of a percent hikes in November. Mm, setting those expectations for us. Caleb, thanks. Farnoosh, I'm going to go back to you. Of course, so many Americans, of course, feeling the impact and have been for months now uh, based on what we've seen. And I, I know we don't have a crystal ball here, but do do you anticipate any major inflation relief in sight? Oh, my gosh. If I knew that answer, um, you know, one thing that I, I continue to look at and, and not to be a downer here, but we are entering storm season and we know that climate change is not improving fast enough. And so um, as I look ahead and I think about all those farms and all those you know plants around the country, around the world um, that are going to be vulnerable to hurricanes and more storms. I mean, the real issue here with inflation, um, part of it, I think, is still the supply disruption, the supply shortages that we have, which have certainly improved over the last year, but we're still not out of the woods there. And, and now we have another season of potential calamity that's going to uh, destroy crops, and that's going to mean more prices going up at the grocery store. So I don't want to be a downer, but I just don't see, you know, uh, really um, a clear path out of this, at least not this year. If you look at what economists are forecasting, they think that inflation, I think this time next year or over the next 18 months is where we're going to see inflation come back down to quote unquote normal levels. And Caleb, talking about interest rate hikes here, this report comes just one week before the Federal Reserve's decision on that potential rate hike. Do you think this report will influence that decision? And if so, how exactly will that happen? Yeah, I think it's just going to cement the decision that I think has already been made. The Fed officials, Fed governors, uh, Chair Jay Powell have been talking tough about raising rates because inflation has been sticky high. So we can expect, as I said, another three quarters of a percent hike when they meet September 20th, 21st. There's three more interest rate meetings this year. Expect big hikes this meeting. Expect another one in November. Maybe we'll have a cooler one at the end of December. But the Fed is going to step on the gas here because inflation is nowhere near their 2 percent target. We're very, very far away from that. We may see that next year with all this demand destruction going on. But as Farnoosh points out, there's a lot of supply chain issues. There's weather issues. We may have a railway strike by the end of this week that could knock uh, $2 billion a day off the U.S. economy if those uh, hmm. uh, uh, railway workers don't come to an agreement on prices. Yeah, so many mitigating factors here. Farnoosh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is about to raise rates to find inflation, quote, until the job is done. So, what is the eventual end game here? And is there anything else the Fed can do to help return prices to something that we would feel would be slightly more normal? 
Well, I think the end game is that soft landing expression that we've been throwing around a lot this year. And that basically means that the Fed wants to clamp down on inflation, raise interest rates enough where um, things can go, quote unquote, back to normal. They're not going to destroy the job market. They're not going to you know, throw us into a harsh recession. Um, personally, I don't think that a recession is avoidable at this point. It really just mat depends on how severe it's going to be. Recessions come in all shapes and sizes. Um, and so I think the goal is to you know, continue, as Caleb mentioned, to raise interest rates, because that is really their primary tool. The Fed really doesn't have a whole lot in its arsenal. Um, there is, of course, fiscal policy, which falls under the president's domain. And we have seen with the Inflation Reduction Act some hope that there will be specific moves to, to at least control inflation long term. It's not going to be immediate, but things like raising taxes on wealthy companies, um, helping to negotiate prescription drug costs for those on Medicare, those obviously are going to be helpful for a lot of reasons. But one is, of course, that they're going to have maybe some um, way to control inflation long term. So there's monetary policy, which the Fed is working very hard at. And then there's fiscal policy, which... Um, you know, the verdict is still out whether the Inflation Reduction Act is actually going to reduce inflation, but there is effort there. A lot of questions for sure. What we do know, though, on this, Dow futures have dropped 300 points. And Caleb, talk to us about the long term impact of continually raising these rates and what that could mean for the average American. Yeah, make that 500 points and they oh. continue to drop precipitously. I'm just watching the markets right now because wow. I think a lot of investors thought in, uh, inflation was slightly tamer last month, given the big drop in gasoline prices. Not at all. Now I think investors are swallowing the hard pill that we're going to get very aggressive rate hikes going forward for the next couple of months. That's not what we were expecting, at least last week. As of the last uh, five or six days, the Fed has been talking very tough. So. Uh, Dow futures are dropping. The stock market has been in sort of a spinning cycle here as investors try to weigh out what was going to happen in the future. Now I think we know more aggressive rate hikes means more pressure on companies because borrowing costs go up. And that's why you're seeing a big sell off today. A spinning cycle that we are all caught right in the middle of. Caleb Silver and Farnoosh Tarabi, thank you both so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.